Hi guys, this is Edna with Scribe Photography and today I'm going to teach you how I retouch newborn baby skin. There are lots of little samples here I'm going to show you. I've got this baby and this baby and this baby, but I'm going to start with this one just to kind of give you an idea of what I do. Um, first of all, I, I have three screens that I normally use, so my uh, palettes here are not normally here, so I'm normally zoomed in just a little bit more and seeing the whole image. But um, I want to have these here so you can get an idea of what I'm touching and pressing and clicking on. So the first thing I'm going to say is there are a million different ways of doing this as in anything in Photoshop. This is just the way that I do it. I've been in business for 25 years. I'm an extensively published award-winning photographer and I want to just teach you the methods that I use. Um, first things first, uh, this image looks pretty good. The color looks pretty good, pretty natural. I use a particular way to, um, you, I use a gray card uh, before I start shooting so that I can get really nice skin tones right off the bat. So uh, the first thing that I normally take care of in any newborn shoot is the little flakes, the little baby flakes right here. And um, you can do that uh, a few different ways or a bunch of different ways. You can use the spot healing brush tool. So like this, see that? That can take care of all of the little spots. Just like that. If you don't wanna use the spot healing brush tool you can always use the cloning brush or the patch tool, the patch tool right here. Um, I have that set here on the first little box and we're going with source, well, patch is normal. So here is a little dot, I'm gonna grab it. It automatically wants to grab it so you just move it to a direction where there is no spot. So like this, see? That's another way of going about it also. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, another thing that I do is I use the clone tool. And here is a little spot here. So I always clone in the direction that, I, that the cheek is running or the nose is running or whatever line or shape you're using to retouch. You wanna, we wanna clone in that direction. So I'll go this way and I'll usually go in both directions. So I'm getting skin from both sides in case there's slightly different lights and shadows that maybe you're not aware of. Um, so I see how I, and then when you make a mistake, you can just press control Z that happens often. So, um, I Photoshop in this direction. So little spots and little crusties and little things that you want to take care of. You can do easily with the clone brush tool. And little spots like these you can also take care of. And I'll go back and forth between using different types of brushes. Now I will tell you, I am a huge proponent of not over retouching babies. I think that a good sign of low end photography is babies that look too retouched. You lose all the contrast. You lose the some of the pinkness on the face and the body that's naturally there. You don't wanna do too much, um, but you do want to retouch. I mean, that is um, a great service that you can offer your clients. I just think that you've seen those photos where the baby looks like there's no dark, sh there's no shadows and there's no light anywhere. It's just, everything looks flat and plastic. I think that's just too much. So little things that you see right off the bat, you can get, you can take care of. So here we go. Um, again, I'm, I'm retouching in this direction I'm grabbing from here and I'm retouching this way I'm grabbing from here and I retouch this way because these are the same shadows and here like let's say here you see there's light and dark light here and dark here if I was retouching this I would again go in that same shape so we're softening up here now I'm going to teach you how I do um, how I take care of the little pink or overly red or overly pink sections. You can see here plainly that the baby's face is warm and yellow and looks beautiful, but here you definitely have a lot of pink that you can get rid of. So this is how I do it. Again, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I'm going to take a copy of my background right now. I'm going to grab this 
layer and I'm going to bring it down right here to this copy and I'm in my layers palette. And I am going to make a copy of the face. I'm going to use a lasso tool and I'm going to copy this face right here like this. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're deleting this layer later. This is just what we're using to make sure that we have the same tonality for the hands and the face. So I'm copying this, pressing Control C, and then I'm just pasting it right back where it belongs, Control V. So this is the copy layer here with the face, right here, it's just the face, okay? Again, we're not gonna use this layer for anything else other than showing and br bringing in the right correct color and showing what it's supposed to look like. Now, here under this layer underneath the layer of the face, the regular background layer that we're working on. This is our sort of like safe background layer that we have in case we want to bring anything back or we made a mistake or something that we can't come back to. This is our, our sort of original layer here. So here in this layer, I am going to use the selective color area here. So right here, you see this little thing that looks like a yin and yang? That's what we're gonna use, selective color. And the thing with selective color is as you start messing with this, you're gonna notice everything is going that color. So this is why we have the face here. So watch this. See how I do this? How everything is going that color, watch. See here around the face, you can see that everything is starting to go that color. So we're gonna start off on red. Red is really what we're trying to get rid of, these pinks and reds right here. So make sure you, you go on to red. It's usually on red, so you don't really have to worry about it. But right now we're going to click on red, and you see that? See the difference there? So we're going to lighten up to the skin tone here of the baby's face. We're going to lighten that up till, till it's about the same density. We're going to add yellow. There we go, we're already seeing the difference here. Look at the hands now and look at the face. That's almost perfect, I think. We're gonna mess with magenta a little bit and that looks pretty good to me. Let's mess with cyan a little bit. I don't think that makes any difference. Okay, so here we see the difference between the face and the hands. The hands are not perfect, but other parts of the body are starting to go very yellow and or green or weird. And so we really only wanna bring in what we need. So we're done with that. We can press X because here is the selective color, right? So now this mask is white. We want to remove all the yellow and everything, all, everything we've done so far for this. We want to remove it and add in only what we want. So we're going to take black right here, black. You can always press X right there or click on this little arrow that goes in both directions until you have black. And then we're gonna take the fill tool here and we're gonna fill this in black. Now we're back to the original image. See what a difference that make, makes? But we are going to brush in the areas where we want to match the face a little bit more. So I'm, I'm always, almost always in the softest brush. When I'm cloning and all that, we've got the softest brush available and the softest airbrushy brush available. And I'm gonna be going at around 30, 35, um, opacity here your flow can be 80 100 anywhere around there and we're gonna start painting in with white so again press X and that'll put you right back to white and we're gonna start painting in the fingers see that what a big difference that's making and that's about right there and here too we're gonna Remove a little bit of the... Now, whenever you need to move an image around on your screen like this, just press the space bar, hold the space bar, and move the image, okay? So here we are going to be taking away a little bit of that. Okay, perfect. Now we can delete that layer, and now we actually have the layer that we need. And here I think I got a little bit of yellow on here, so I'm going to press X again, and I'm going to... Just remove that. There you go. See, that's a nice thing about working with layer masks is that you can just remove anything as you're going. You're not set to anything like when you're using eraser. 
I'm also going to remove a little bit of the pink here, but not a lot. We can go down to like maybe 20% up here. And then whatever tool you're on, you can just press the number in and it'll change that opacity. You don't have to worry about going up here and changing it. Literally, you just press any number you want. You can see up here in the opacity. See? So I'm going to go to 30. Let's do 25. And I'm going to press X to make it white. And I'm going to make it a little bit warmer there. There we go. Just a tad. All right. So now that we have that done again, we're going back to this layer that we're actually working on. And we're going to start retouching the skin. So these are the things that bother me. There's a little bit of redness around the nose, so we're going to take care of that just like this. See how I'm going around the same area? There we go. You can always press Control Z if you don't like it. A little bit of pink around the eye. Right there. I love pink cheeks. There should be some pinkness in babies because babies aren't a flat, weird color. They're, they are pink, so... There we go. That looks beautiful. I don't see any little things. Oh, here we go. And some parents don't mind if you remove some of the hair, let's say on the shoulders or on the head, and, and some do. So find out from the parents beforehand. I usually do a little bit anyways, just a little softening of any little hairy foreheads or hairy backs. Again, I'm just cloning at a at a 35%, just some of that hair, so it smooths and softens everything just a little bit. It's not a lot, it's just a little. And we're keeping to the same tonality, so if you retouch here, you have to take from here, not here or here. So there you go. There you go. Beautiful. Same thing here. I'm just going to soften this whole area just a tad like this. And I like to just softly retouch everything a little bit. Here, this little hairy shoulder, I'm going to remove a little bit of that hairiness around the shoulder. There you go. Just a little. Doesn't have to be a lot. You don't want to be very exaggerated. People want to recognize their babies. They don't want their babies to just disappear and look like a totally different baby. So I think that looks pretty good. A couple of the things that I like to do are to go in and darken up the little lashes. You can also add some sharpening here. Um, so you can really see them. Anything that you've lost in the retouching process like you can always darken up or lighten up or whatever you see fit now here I'm noticing that the forehead looks a little more bluish than this area here so an easy way to do that that you can just kind of take care of right on on the spot would be like this grab the forehead press shift f6 which is feathering and you can do 20 30 40 whatever and you can just literally press Control M and go into curves and just lighten that forehead a little bit. You you have to make sure that you feather this area really well, otherwise you're going to be able to see the delineation. That's too much. So right around there is perfect. So let's press Control D, and now you can see the before and the after. See. Another way of doing it would be the same way that we did it here with the selective color and making another layer. I'm just teaching you different ways to do it. A lot of times, you know, you know what they say, time is money. You can't spend too much time on something because you're really losing money if you're spending a lot of time uh, retouching. My best friend can spend hours retouching an image and doesn't basically at the end of the day, he's making less than minimum wage. So here we go. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go in and sharpen this just a little bit. I like smart sharpen. That's kind of the way that I go, but you can use any other kind of sharpening that you want. But this is the way that I like to do it. And here's a little before and after. You can barely tell it's the slightest little difference, but now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add a curves layer again with this little yin yang symbol right here. 
we're going to add a curves layer mask. So we're going to curves. I like it more than levels because I think you have more control over highlights and shadows. So we're going to brighten that image up just a little bit. And if you want to add contrast, you just go down to the lower portion and drop it down. That's contrast. See that? And if you want to bring up shadows, same thing. You just bring up from the lower part of this scale here. So these are the shadows and these are the highlights. Same thing up here. If you want to blow out your highlights or bring down your highlights, that's the way that you do that. Um, I don't want to add a lot of contrast, just a tad, which means I want it just below the line that I have here. There we go. Oh, I really like that. I think that's really pretty. You can X out of that. And now we have the image. It's done and it's ready. Let me show you the before and after. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. And um, you'll see the difference right away here. Here is the before. This is the after. And you can also do it in your history brush tool. So check this out. Here's the history brush tool. And if you click on this image, you're going to see the after. Before and after. Okay. Before and after. There you go, guys. Please uh, click to subscribe and like this image. If you have any other questions or if you want to see anything, let me know. Um, I'm going to be going over some of these other little retouches here in another video to teach you how to do some other uh, more advanced um, options for your retouching. But for now, uh, this is what we're doing. Again, I am mostly a wedding photographer. I do do some newborn photography. So if you have any questions about anything, portrait photography, family portraits, newborn sexy shoots, anything, uh, hit me up in the comment section and I'm happy to post a video. Um, I know that I've gotten a lot of response to the baby video, so I made another baby video, but it doesn't need to be that way. You can ask anything you want. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a great day.